We've spoken on this channel a lot about the horrible curses, rituals, or spells that witches might perform and what they might do. We've even talked about where these witches might be located and how they might haunt you if you go there. What we haven't talked enough about though is the horrible things that people did to try and discover these witches. What is good my friends? My name is Nicholas Playlog and in today's video we're going to be looking at the top 5 scary tests used in the Salem witch trials. Let's get into it. Number 5 on this list is the prayer test. This test basically acts as the single most important audition of your life. It was thought that witches were unable to recite the word of God and that reading or speaking the Bible would cause their immediate demise. Therefore, they would have accused witches come to the front of the court or gathering and recite verses from the Bible. Now this test makes a decent amount of sense if you think about it, although we can't forget what era we were in when this took place. Not everyone was literate at this time, in fact a lot of them weren't. I can also imagine the immense pressure that you would feel to perform that verse to perfection. Speaking as somebody who's been through their fair share of auditions in life, I can tell you that auditions are nerve wracking to begin with, but add on the fact that your life is on the line, that really raises the stakes I think. And it wasn't enough to have you simply not go up in flames as you were reading it. A simple slip up, a mispronunciation, a little pause, all of these things were evidence that the accused was a witch and was struggling to get through the verse. The crazy thing about this as well is that even if you did recite this verse flawlessly without fail, you might still be put to death anyways. George Burroughs had to perform this test during the Salem trials and even after he absolutely nailed it, they still killed him. The people were so convinced that he was a witch who needed to die that they chalked up his performance as being a devilish trick and killed him regardless. Number 4 on this list is witch cakes. Witch cakes are pretty unique in how they were administered because your fate wasn't decided by a person or the cake itself. It was actually by a dog. Now I feel for these pups because they had to eat these concoctions and they aren't palatable at all. What people would do is take a sample of the victim's urine, so the person presumably being affected by the witch, take a sample of their urine and then they take some rye meal and a sprinkle of ashes and that's it. Take those three things, mix them together, toss them in the oven, and then bake it up. Now I don't really know where they got the idea that urine and ashes would tell us anything about these witches, but that's the conclusion that they got. They then take the dog, and it was thought that dogs were not only man's best friend, but actually witches' best friends as well. That dogs back in the day had some sort of tie to witches, and that they were supporters of witches. So you take this witch cake, you feed it to the dog, and now you just observe that dog's best behavior and the accused witch has to just cross their fingers that this dog doesn't start acting weirdly, biting, barking at nothing, just generally acting strangely. It was thought that if the dog did this or exhibited any of the same symptoms that the victim was experiencing, then witchcraft was assuredly at foot and then we can start pointing fingers. I gotta say though that I seriously feel for the dog in this instance, cause I mean the poor guy did literally nothing at all and now he's gotta eat this urine cake that may or may not curse him with something, so yeah, the, the dog's got it rough here guys. Number 3 on this list is called the touch test. Witches were said to have the ability to control other people. Basically they could cast a spell on you and you're now either under their control or in a lot of pain. If these witches were to touch the person who's believed to be under their curse or spell though, then that individual would have some type of response. Let's say someone who's controlled by these witches starts acting strange or frantic, then a simple simple touch by the witch would calm them completely. I'm not really sure if this theory on witches and touching their victims has been founded by anything or is true to this day, but back then they definitely believed that this was the case. The problem with this test though was that there was a lot of wannabe actors back then. In 1662, there were two older women who were being accused of witchcraft. Their names were Amy Denny and Rose Cullender. Now, they had reportedly cursed some young girls and were causing them serious harm, which manifested itself in the way of seizures. These girls would have seizures, but it was believed that if the witch who was possessing them, so Amy and Rose, were to touch them, then the seizure would stop immediately. Well, sure enough, this was tested in court 
and it actually worked. The second that the old women touched these girls, the seizures stopped immediately and their hands just grew completely soft and totally calm. But let's not kill them just yet. They then blindfolded the young girls and did the exact same experiment but now with other people subbing in and touching them. Well it turns out the girls were faking and would stop seizuring to other people who touched them instead of just the older women. Perfect. So Amy and Rose, they can't possibly be witches then. We ran the test, they passed, they should be set free. Maybe in today's world that's what would happen, but not in 1662. Both of them were hung anyways, and the young girls got off scot-free. Number two on this list is called pricking. This was a horrible test that was basically just a glorified means of torture. Now I'm sure that most of you know what a witch mark is, but if you don't, then it's basically a mark from the devil that indicates you have a pact with Satan and witches have these on their bodies. However, if there's an accused witch that doesn't have a witch mark, that doesn't mean that they're off the hook. It's possible that they still have a witch mark. It's just hard to see or it can't be seen to the naked eye. Well, if this was the case, then you need a professional pricker, right? A professional pricker is someone who works solely on discovering witches marks. That's right guys, this was so common that they actually had a career path that came out of it. It was believed that a witches mark didn't feel any pain and in turn wouldn't show any signs of weaknesses. Therefore if you prick them with a sharp point then the person wouldn't be in any pain and no blood would come from this prick. So professional prickers would have their accused witches and they would just take their chosen sharp object and just stab them until you had a Spot that didn't bleed. And then, because you didn't bleed, they would kill you for being a witch anyways. It also didn't stop at just pricking, but it even went to scratching as well. The victim of an apparent witch would be allowed to come and scratch that witch until they drew blood. This was supposed to cause the victim some relief from their symptoms, and if it did, then that would be enough to make the accused person guilty of witchcraft and they would be executed. Yeah, you really did not want to get stuck with the pricking test. Number one on this list is the swimming test. Now this is one that I'm sure most of you have already heard about, but it has to be on this list based on just simply how ridiculous it was. Now even though in hindsight this test was nuts, I do kind of understand the logic of how they got there in the first place. It was believed back then that witches had rebuffed the sacrament of Christ, meaning that baptism was definitely a no-go for a witch. Because water is tied heavily to baptism, the logic followed that if you were a witch and you were thrown into the water, then the water would reject your body from entering and therefore you would float to the top of it. To test this theory, they would take their suspected witches, strip them down naked, hog tie their limbs, and then throw you into the water. And if you floated, then you're a witch. But if you sink, you're just a person. Again guys, this kind of makes sense, except for the people who weren't actually witches and sank to the bottom. Now I should note that they would sometimes tie a rope around your body and if you sank, they would pull you back up to the top. But this only happened sometimes. Other times they would just throw you in and if you sank and drowned then, oh well, I mean you drown now and at least you weren't a witch. Also, this tying of the rope wasn't a perfect science either. A lot of times people who sank would drown anyways as they were being pulled up. Basically, just the accusation of being a witch meant that you would be sentenced to death because if you did somehow manage to float, then now you're a witch and you're gonna be burned or hung. And if you did sink, as most people did, then you'd probably just drown. Sometimes even if you did sink and you did then get pulled back up to the top and survived, they would just kill you anyways. Back then, if more than one person accused you of being a witch, then you were pretty much as good as dead. Well, there you have it, guys. That is our video of the top five scary tests used in the Salem Witch Trials. Please comment down below which of these would be your least favorite. For me, you know, I know that the water's bad, but I think I gotta go with the pricking. That just does not sound like a fun time at all. Please hit the like button, smash the subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.